Welcome! I'm Amy Chapel from A Marina Designs and today I'm here to share with you a project from the Vintage Home Sewing Book by Bev McCullough of Flamingo Toes for Thermoweb. Um, today we are going to do this Darling Bicycle Applique Pillow. It is so cute and fun and this book contains eight different projects including the bike pillow that are so darling and cute. To begin with our pillow today, you are going to need to gather all of your materials. They're listed here in the book. You will need a fabric, and I am using this cute Hello Sweetheart fabric by Echo Park for Riley Blake Designs, along with some Riley Blake Basics, some Blossom Basics, and some Kisses Basics. I am also using an off-white, um, just solid fabric for the background of my applique. And you will also need, of course, your heat and bond uh, material. I really prefer to use this heat and bond easy print feather light for this project. You're going to be layering your applique pieces so it's nice to have a nice and thin um, glue to adhere your applique pieces to it. You can also use heat and bond light. You can trace them onto yardage of the heat and bond, but I find it so simple to just take my pattern pieces from my book over to my printer, which has a copy feature to it, um, and then just print it onto the paper side of my easy print feather light sheets. Once you have your pattern all printed out, and you will find that it's super handy that they have already reversed all of the images for you so that you don't have to worry about mirror imaging anything. You will take and cut out around each of the individual sections for the different colorways. And then once you have your section cut out, you will adhere it to the wrong side of the fabric you are using for that particular section. So in this case, I used um, this cute red heart print. You'll see this is the right side of it. Um, to do this section that says to cut it out from red. Now, I did follow most of these directions. Instead of doing aqua for the base of the bike, I did the hot pink. And the other piece that I changed was instead of doing a medium pink here, I chose to use this fun black heart floral print, um, or this black heart print. The floral is the one that I used for the bottom of my pillow front. So once you have each section cut out, you are going to take it to your iron. This is a great opportunity. I like to use my Cricut Easy Press 2 for this. It heats up really quickly. It doesn't have any steam to it, so you don't have to worry about shutting off that feature on your iron. And the other part that I really like about my Easy Press 2 is it has a timing feature. A lot of times I find I shortchange the amount of time that the adhesive needs to adhere to the fabrics that I'm using. So I like the timing feature on my Easy Press too. If you do not have a Cricut Easy Press, you absolutely just take it to your iron, make sure you turn off the steam function, put it on medium heat, follow the directions on the packaging for your heat and bond, um, and it will tell you to do a brief heat um, for this first one. So I think it's about two seconds with no steam to adhere your pattern pieces to the back of your fabric. And once you have that done, then you'll take a pair of nice sharp scissors and cut out each of your applique pieces. Um, you can see some of the pieces I have cut out over here. Once you have your pieces cut out, you will want to remove the paper backing from those pieces and then they are ready to go. And you'll see when you do that, that there's now a shiny um, aspect to the back side of your applique pieces that means the glue is adhered. If when you're going to peel off the paper backing you find that the glue is wanting to come up with the paper you probably like I do a lot have not put enough heat on it so I take it back to my iron and heat it um, for just another second or two to get that glue stuck to the fabric um, so that you can get off the backing and leave the whole piece covered with the adhesive. The next thing you're going to do once you have all of your pattern pieces done is you are ready to start building your applique. So you will cut out the top of your pillow according to the directions in the book. And then what I did is I took the applique layout guide and I made a photocopy of it. 
That way I could take it to my light box um, and I didn't also have to worry about the spine and the bend in the book a little bit, distorting where I'm placing my applique pieces. Now I wanted to make sure that I was centering my bike, so I have a couple of tips on how to do that. The first thing is in the directions, she recommends putting the bike one inch from the top of, um, from the bottom of your pillow front fabric piece. So I took my ruler and measured one inch down from the bottom of my tires, and then I drew a line there so that I would have a guide of where to place the bottom of my fabric piece to make sure that I was starting my applique piece one inch up from the bottom. The second thing that I did is I wanted to make sure it was centered on my fabric piece. And to do that, I measured from the front of this tire to the back of this back piece of luggage. And then I determined that it was about nine and a half um, inches from the front to the back. So I divided that by two, which is about four and three quarters. And so I measured from the front tire back four and three quarters inches and I made a mark there so that I knew where the center of my bike applique was. Then I took my piece of background fabric and lined it up along that bottom seam and then I just pinched a little crease in that center right there so that I would know where my center marking was. So then my other tip and recommendation for building this applique is to use a light box if you have one. Now you can see that you can determine the applique pieces through the paper just fine if you're using a light background, which I strongly recommend. Um, but even still, you can see once you put it on that light box, it's just even easier to see where all of your pieces are supposed to go and the outlines and get them all lined up neatly. So I'm going to place my applique layout guide first on my light box and then I'm going to line up my center crease on this bottom edge with the mark that I've made on my guide so that I have it centered and then I'm going to line up my bottom edge of my fabric piece with this line that is one inch away from the bottom of my tires and then I'm just going to lay down my fabric and now I'm ready to start applying on or laying down my pieces. So you start with the farthest back piece. So in this case, we're going to start with our tires and I'm just going to lay them down. And I find it's probably easiest to lay a couple of pieces down and then head to your iron, get those fused in place and then come back and do it again, but for the purposes of today, I'm just going to lay out a few of these pieces and show you just kind of the general idea. So you'll find that maybe you didn't cut exactly right, maybe they're not lined up exactly right. I believe crafting, sewing, applique, pretty much everything is more fun if you're not so worried about exactly right and just get close enough. <laughs> so I hope you'll join me on my close enough adventures. Um, you'll find that this pillow turns out darling either way. So you kind of get the general idea. You'll lay down a few pieces. Um, and what I'll do is take my entire light board. Um, this is the bright pad from the Cricut. And I really like how thin it is. And I will take this whole thing over to my ironing board if I'm using my iron or to my mat if I'm using my Easy Press. And I will just slide it right off press it, position it back on my bright pad, finish adding my applique pieces. Once I have all of my applique pieces placed and fused, then I will take a pen, and I like to use these friction pens. You can use a water-soluble pen, an air-soluble pen if you're quick at stitching, um, even a mechanical pencil would work if you're confident in your stitching, and mark out the lines where all your additional stitching will go. The spokes in your tires, the lines on your basket, the handlebars on here, the bird's feet. Um, and then for these, because I'm using a little bit darker fabric and once you put all the layers on, you can see it's kind of hard to see through where they go. I just used the lines as a guide and sort of marked my own lines on there so that I could kind of eyeball it, but have some guidance where I'm going when I go to stitch these. 
So once you have all of your lines marked, you're ready to start stitching down your applique onto your background piece. Now in the book, she recommends using a darning foot or an open-toed free motion foot to do this. If you are wanting to practice your thread sketching skills, which I did, it was so fun um, to just go for it and trace all of the lines of your applique and then all the additional stitching lines that you wanna to add to it. Um, if you don't have this foot or you don't feel confident in that, you can absolutely just use your regular foot and just lift your presser foot a lot, pivot a lot, and follow along and stitch down all of the edges of your applique. So once you have all of your applique pieces stitched down and all of the details that you're going to add with your sewing machine, it's time to fill our basket and add some details to our little bird. So this is where I strayed from the pattern just a hair and I wanted to make mine a little bit more along the themes of Valentine's to go along with the fabric that I was using. So I swapped out the flowers for some love letters and some hearts and I cut these out of felt. I will have the pattern for these little bitty hearts and little felt envelopes. And then instead of using my machine, I just hand embroidered the outlines of those letters and the little hearts um, to seal the envelopes. And then I went ahead and used my embroidery floss and added the little detail on the wings and the eye for the bird's beak. Once you have all of the applique um, and the embroidery done on your bicycle, then you will add the bottom piece to the top piece. Now a note for the pattern, if you follow the cutting directions exactly from the book, you will end up with a piece that is actually 17 inches tall by 18 inches wide. Um, you're missing an inch in there with the seam allowances, which are, um, you need to note, half an inch for this project. So I would recommend adding an inch to the cutting directions on the bottom part of here um, so that you end up with an 18 by 18 inch square. Um, or you can go ahead and cut down your piece to make a 16 inch pillow form or pillow if you would prefer that. So um, just note that measurement for the bottom part of your pillow. So once you've sewn the bottom to the top of your pillow front pieces, then it's ready to be quilted. Um, I used some basting spray and some stitching, uh, some fleece the stitch and sew, um, sew in fleece, but you could also use the um, fusible fleece, um, the heat and bond fusible fleece to do the batting for this to give it just a little bit of body. Um, either way, you're gonna be just fine and then you'll want to quilt it however you want. I use just a little meandering free motion quilting with some hearts to it um, that I thought kind of echoed the hearts of the fabrics that I really enjoyed. Once you have this quilted, if you want to follow the pattern directly, you can add your trim um, here. I am going to actually omit that part and then you will want to add the backing to your pillow. She has the directions for that in the book. Or um, I like to do a zipper, a hidden zipper um, back for my pillows. And so you can go to my YouTube channel um, at Amarini Designs and you can find the video for how I create a hidden zipper pillow back um, if you'd like to use that method as well. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you have fun making this darling bike applique. It is so cute and fun and I hope that you will um, check out this book, Vintage Home Sewing. It's full of lots of fun projects. Have fun sewing!